All right, let's continue with measurements. So um, we've defined the actions, both preparatory and metric, and now we're going to go into describing how to measure them. Now, this is important because um, these units that you have over here, they're just numbers, and there will be disputes if you if you don't define the measurement technique about how to get those numbers. Exactly what do you count? Are there any conversion, uh, you know, formula, etc. Right. So this is where you define them. And then notes is more free form. Um, this is just additional notes that I think might be helpful. So for example, with these uh, proxy metrics, um, I'm going to use a weighted moving average. So that's going to be probably the most co uh, complicated calculation. And then for the rest of them, they're just going to be um, a mix of manual counting or um, pulling numbers from a dashboard of some sort. Right, that's usually what it is. And for the notes, that's where you add additional details. So let's begin. All right, so we have just completed the measurements and notes columns. So for um, proxy metrics, we'll be using a 30-day weighted moving average um, of, the, of the particular proxy metric stats that we're calculating. Um, for some things, um, especially for the North Star, you want to use uh, weighted moving averages so that you smooth out the fluctuations um, and you want to weight the most recent ones higher and um, the less recent ones lower so that um, you do still see the direct impact um, play out just a little bit smoothed out. Um, the thing is for this we like will likely need to create a customized dashboard so you know that's a to-do and that will be part of the um, preparatory actions as defined earlier on and then of course what actually is the calculation? How do you actually work out this number? Um, you know, 30 day WMA, just a top level, but you know, what are the, what are the weights that will be used, et cetera, right? So, so that needs to be defined uh, more precisely. And so probably put that in a wiki page or notion or something like that, that the team can um, agree upon. Next up, we have um, dev core components, so number of dev personas that are completed, um, and number of dev journey maps that are completed as well, right? So these are things that you will design as part of your DevRel team um, in order to uh, figure out how do you do dev marketing, how do you do dev education, how do you do dev success. Those are what dev core components are, and having these defined properly, properly right, is is important. And so when we measure this particular metric, like the number of them that we have completed, we need to do two things, right? So one is we need to manually count um, that to track the metrics, but then also we need to define what is actually a completed version of each one of these, right? So for that, you know, here's a to-do, but we will uh, then subsequently need to create a, a wiki page for the team to agree upon, you know, what is actually the definition of a completed one of each of these artifacts. Moving on to dev marketing, right? So it's about number of developers who have seen particular marketing material. And so the measurements uh, for these systems typically are provided by the tool that's being used in um, itself. So the ad provider should have its own analytics or dashboard available and an email automation tool, for example, Hotspot will also have its own analytics or dashboard until we can just pull the numbers from that. And we do that for both of these cases. We're pulling different numbers, but from the same um, tool or dashboard. Moving on to dev education. Um, for the number of demo repos um, being created, I think um, this will be a manual count. Um, could probably use the API that queries GitHub or something 
to automate that, but that may or may not be overkill depending on your situation and your velocity. But um, one, one thing that I wanted to note here is that a demo repo may not be a single tutorial depending on how you've structured them. So that's why it's important to define the measurement column, right? Because you need to know if I increase this number from 50 to 51, what does that mean? Does that mean I create a new demo repo? Or does that mean that I created a demo repo within which there is one particular tutorial, right? So you could have multiple tutorials inside a single repo because that's the way that that particular software needs to be structured. And so if that in, if that's the case, if you create a demo repo with three, then that number should increase from 50 to 53, for example, right? So that's something to take note of. Now, the next thing is number of events. So use an events calendar to track this and that will be a manual count. Number of passively educated developers and actively de um, educated developers. So I touched on this earlier on. These are two different statistics, right? One is someone just read or watched something um, and so didn't actually actively do something. And then this is, um, well, they, they went beyond that. They actually, you know, cloned the repo locally on their computer or ran it in a cloud IDE and actually executed the script and, you know, got hands on with it. So, um, it's, you will tend to get higher numbers for this and lower numbers for this, but these are higher ROI in terms of, you know, getting through the funnel, etc. So we want to target them or measure them differently. So for this, you're going to be using the analytics pages um, or analytics dashboard, etc., from the various assets that you're using. For example, YouTube or Google Analytics or um, for LMS, let's say using Thinkific or Teachable, you know, use their dashboard. Um, and the other thing here is that it's not just number of pages read, but you want the number of unique visitors who have read those pages, right? So just taking note of that over here. Um, for this one, this is actually, as noted here, um, the when you create the demo repos in, in this one, you should incorporate right the collection of custom metrics. So then when you're measuring it, uh, you would have to have a custom query of on-chain activity. And perhaps one of the preparatory actions for this is to code um, the right on chain activity levels that pertain to the specific tutorial or demo repo etc right so um, that's how you'd measure it and this is just a note uh, mentioning the same thing what I just mentioned next up we moving on to dev success we have increasing the number of bounties so this would be measured or tracked in an events calendar as a manual count and decreasing the number of developer friction points that should be tracked in a team wiki page or maybe even a spreadsheet and that would be a manual count. Now, uh, this one, as I mentioned earlier on, is interesting because it's a decrease and it also is a compound um, it, it is a compound uh, value because there's two components to it. One is discovery of more dev friction points, and then the other one is, um, how shall I put this, uh, fixing those uh, things. So um, maybe what what is needed here is uh, to, to reflect that, right? So this process is iterative. As you go through these columns, you figure out that sometimes the key result that you defined over here is not particularly well written, right? And it needs to be uh, improved upon. And so that's why you have an iterative approach. So I'm going to do an example of that over here. So decrease the number of developer friction points. Um, rem I, would, I would actually say increase the number of dev friction points. So now we've got an increase um, of the number of friction points that are both discovered and fixed. 
And so in this case, we want that to, let's say, go in the other direction. So is equal to previous column. So in, instead of a decrease of 25%, it'll be an increase of 25%, right? So times 1.25. So that means we want to have 25 more dev friction points discovered and or fixed, right? So we'll, we'll track, we'll, we'll note that here in the measurement um, about how to count it. So each new friction point discovered uh, counts as one. Each new, each, I would say, existing friction point um, fixed or removed counts as one. So let's say you discovered uh, 20 new friction points and fixed 25 of them of the new ones or a mix of the new ones and the old ones, however you split it that would mean that we have hit this one. So let's say you, um, sorry, discovered 10 new friction points and fixed five of the new friction points and another, and fixed another 15, sorry, another 10, then that would mean that you've um, discovered 10 and fixed 15 in total. That means an increase of 25. And that would mean that you have hit this OKR for this particular time um, thing. So yeah, so that just about rounds it out. And that was an example of iteration. So we've got these different sections demarcated by the pink lines. So the first one is defining key results. Next one is the actual numbers. And the next one is the preparatory actions. The next one is measurements and notes. So one more thing I will say about iteration is that you might also, when defining the measurements, you might realize um, that these numbers are incorrect in the sense that they're either too ambitious or not ambitious enough. So, for example, oh, this one's a typo, so 1.2. So let's say you want to increase the number of actively developer, uh, actively educated developers. And once you've actually said, okay, so each time someone attempts a tutorial, that's going to count as one, right? So maybe I can be a bit more ambitious and say I want 30 new developers instead of, oops, I want 30 new developers or 30% increase rather than a 20% increase, something like that. So you can iterate like that as well, right? So as you go through these different sections, filling out the columns, any of the previous columns are fair game, right? And not just columns, rows as well, right? So for example, this one, right? You might very well decide to split this into two separate rows if, uh, if you wanted to um, distinguish between friction point discovery and friction point uh, fixes or resolutions. Right. Okay, that's it for measurements and notes. And now we'll move on to the next set of columns, which is responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. I'm just going to make these a tiny bit bigger so that yeah, it fits. 